Hello, thanks for joining another episode of Audit Trails. Today we're going to be discussing NIST 800-171. So let's go ahead and jump right into that. So what is NIST 800-171? So this is a standard from the National Institute of Standards and Technology, also referred to as NIST, all about protecting controlled unclassified information in non-federal systems and organizations. So what is it all about? So it's really all about implementing security controls to protect CUI. So CUI is controlled unclassified information. So this is information that is created or owned by the government that requires safeguarding or dissemination controls consistent with applicable laws, regulations, and, and any government policies. So it's important to call out that this information is not classified it's not like corporate intellectual property or anything like that unless it's created for or included in requirements related to a specific government contract so some examples of this can include like emails or electronic files specific blueprints or drawings um, proprietary contractor information like sales orders contracts stuff like that or, or even the physical records, so like if there was printouts or anything like that that's in relation to a specific government contract. So let's talk a little bit more about the standard itself. So as we talked about earlier, it's really all about safeguarding that CUI and that data. So NIST 800-171 is really a subset of NIST 853 controls, and we'll dive into that a little bit more later on in the video. So who is NIST 800-171 for? Who is this applicable to? So this is applicable to both the contractor and subcontractors working on any government contract that handles CUI or that controlled unclassified information. So let's jump into a little bit of background on NIST 800-171. So why was it created? So it was released back in 2016. It was really created in part to improve cybersecurity and kind of put a framework out there for protecting controlled unclassified information. Because before this standard was out there, each um, division of the government or branch, if you will, they really had their own program and, and own protocols when it came to protecting controlled unclassified information. So the defense federal acquisition regulation supplement or dfars which um, many people refer to it as supplements the far which governs how federal government acquires supplies materials or services and back in december of 2015 the department of defense published an addendum to dfars which required this this publication as the cybersecurity framework for government contractors and it was it really forced everybody to implement this and in, in the safeguards included within this publication so now that we have some background we kind of know what the publication is all about let's dive into what's actually in the publication so NIST 800-171 consists of 14 control families and among those 14 control families there's a total of 110 security controls and let's jump into these families uh, one by one, kind of discuss what they're all about, how many controls are in each, and, and stuff like that. So we'll start at the top of the list with access control. So access control, uh, very similar to any other NIST publication or, or um, <coughs> security publication out there. It's really all about who is authorized to view your data. So like I said, this is specific to CUI and, and those boundaries. There's a total of 22 controls within this family in NIST one. 171 and like i said it's all about who's authorized to see the data is there pro appropriate permission set up stuff like that the next one is awareness and training so this is all about if people are properly instructed in how to treat information so are they going through annual training classes are they being taught um about specific security boundaries and data boundaries and, and really what they should be doing when they're handling CUI and stuff like that. Audit and accountability. So that's all about 
are records being kept of authorized and unauthorized access? Is there accountability? So can you identify who a violator might be or who has access specific information? So of the 110 controls, audit and accountability is nine of those. Configuration management. So how are your networks and safety protocols built and documented? So this is really gonna be about um, it could be down to like specific servers. How are those built? How are those? Is there a process documented? Stuff like that. That accounts for another nine controls. Identification and authentication. So what users are approved to access CUI and how are they verified prior to granting them access? So that's important. That's 11 controls of the 110. So this will go hand in hand with um, access control. So access control is about who is authorized to view the data and then identification and authentication. How do you validate that that person is actually the one viewing the data? So that's important here as well. And then we're gonna jump into incident response. So incident response is all about your process if a breach or a security threat were to occur occur so that includes like notification um, that includes having the appropriate documentation maybe a run book or something of that nature and that accounts for uh, three controls of the 110 and after we're done discussing kind of what each family is about and what they contribute to NIST holistically um, 171 that is well, uh, I'll pull up the documentation and the publication itself, and we'll just kind of scroll through just so everyone can see what it looks like and, and really um, what a specific security control may call out as a requirement. So the next one is going to be maintenance. So what timeline exists for routine maintenance? And more importantly, who's responsible for carrying that maintenance out? That's very important when it comes to um, protecting and, and implementing safeguards around CUI. Media protection. How are electronic and hard copy records and backups safely stored? And who has access to those backups? And that accounts for a total of nine controls. Physical protection. This is going to be about who has access to the systems, equipment, and storage environments. So this accounts for six controls. Personnel security. This is really all about how are employees screened prior to granting them access. So are they getting background checks and, and stuff like that? And that accounts for two controls. Risk assessment. So this is all about are your defenses tested in simulations? Are operations or individuals verified regularly? And we'll, we'll look at this in the actual publication, but um, it does vary a little bit. So this is, this is three controls of the 110. Security assessment. So are processes and procedures still effective? That's, that's very important when it comes to security assessment. And then more importantly, are improvements needed? That's really what we're focusing on when we talk about security assessment. And that accounts for 14 controls. Next one will be system and communications protection. Is information regularly monitored and controlled at key internal and external transmission points? This is a big family within this state, 171. This accounts for 16 controls. Then lastly, we're talking about system and information integrity. So how quickly are possible threats detected, identified, and corrected? So this one will go hand in hand with incident response. Um, this one accounts for seven controls. And like I said, towards the end of this video, I will go ahead and actually pull the publication up and we can take a look at that. So when we're looking at all the specific controls within NIST 800-171, you can really kind of break them down and categorize them into four different categories. So first you have your controls. That's like your data management controls and, and pr processes and stuff like that. And then you can break them down into monitoring and management. So this is real-time monitoring and management of your defined IT systems. So really when you sit back and look at it, it's like your security assessment and risk assessment controls, stuff like that. End user practices. So this is documented, well-defined end user practices and procedures. So this is really all about that documentation. And then lastly, security measures. 
So this is all about the implementation of the, the said defined security measures within the documentation. This is just an easy way to kind of break down the publication a little bit. Um, just a good way of looking at it. So becoming compliant with NIST 800-171. So most importantly, I think it's very important to remember this. It's an ongoing process. It never ends. So starting at the beginning, we have to assess. So evaluate your current state, your current situation. What does my environment look like now? And, and there's some questions that you could ask yourself when you are really starting the process of becoming NIST 800-171 compliant. And we'll get into that a little bit more. Step two is the design. So create the necessary changes. So kind of plan it all out. What do I need to change within my system to be effective and really be compliant with NIST 800-171? Then three is going to be deploy. So now implement said changes that you have designed. And then manage, continue to manage the system to maintain compliance. And as you see here, just with the little graphic on the screen, it is a reoccurring process as your process should evolve over time and you should continue to implement new enhancements. So like I said before, where do we start? What's important here? So it is important to ask yourself a few things about your business, your asset and your data. So something that you really want to start with is, do I have an information security policy in place? So that, that would be something in relation to your business. Um, do you, what physical security policies or physical security in general do you have in place? How many employees do you have? Uh, how many endpoints do you have? These are all very important questions that um, you should have answers to in order to actually implement NIST 800-171 uh, effectively. So let's transition into those assets. So what type of equipment do I have on the network? What type of assets? How many are there? Um, it probably consists of several different asset types. So you could have servers and uh, worker workstations. Um, what operating systems are they running? What kind of encryption do I have in place? Um, what services are we using? So are we using different applications for email? Are we using any SaaS services or anything like that? Um, do we have a DMZ? Do we have any firewalls implemented? These are all very important questions that will help you understand your environment and that point that you have to get to to be compliant with NIST 800-171. And then lastly, your data. So the format of the data, how is it accessed, stuff like that. So how does the CUI enter your organization and in what format? So it's important to have like a data flow diagram or something like that. Um, how many of your users have access to it? So this will go back to those access control policies and stuff like that. Who can access CUI? Where is it stored? Um, is it shared? How do we share it? Can it be accessed remotely? Stuff like that. These are all very important questions that if you know the answer to these questions, it's definitely a head start on becoming NIST 800-171 compliant. All right, let's jump into the next slide here. So NIST 800-171 is transitioning over to CMMC. So CMMC is the Cybersecurity Maturity Model Certification. The Department of Defense is planning to migrate from NIST 800-171 to the CMMC framework later in 2020. There's still a lot of moving parts to this migration. There's really no set date around it, but it is set to be rolled out gradually and will eventually replace NIST 800-171 compliance. So starting in November of 2020, you'll start to see some RFPs and, and government contracts that will require CMMC certification. There's some important differences to call out. So there's different levels within CMMC and within those levels, uh, you have to be at level three to be considered to handle CUI data. So that being said, within level three, all 110 security controls of NIST 800-171 are included at level three of CMMC, and then there's a, another 20 additional controls. So if you wanna learn a little bit more about CMMC, we do have another video on CMMC and kind of what that's all about on the auditor since YouTube channel, so go ahead and check that out. And then 
that's the end of the presentation. Lastly, I just want to open up 